Happy Sabbath, happy day, good evening, good morning from wherever you're joining us from. Karibu sana to this wonderful discussion that we are having yet another day. And as you will notice as we go on with the discussion is that today we are going to try and go a little bit deeper. We've been doing introduction, but we're going to go a little more deeper. And I'm happy to welcome you to this study. And I'm joined by my wonderful team. And before I say anything, or we, before we even introduce ourselves, I'll ask that Tonsongo pray for us. Right, let's believe and pray. Our kind and loving Father and Master, who art in heaven, we humbly come before you this blessed day. We are thankful, O Lord, for the wonderful gift of life and above all else, dear Lord, that in this life we do not live as those who have no guide, but you have granted us the wonderful gift of your word. Now as we look at the history of the word throughout the centuries and how through prophetic instruction you have guided the movement of your word, leading us to this particular day, dear Lord, I pray, may you enable us to break down these themes, to be like little children and enable us to the indwelling of your Holy Spirit to understand these things and beholding all these May we mostly see you high and lifted up, guiding events in humanity. May this build up our faith, and may you lead us as we begin until the very end, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Uh, please say hi to us from you, Jess. Wonderful. Thank you, Rimona. My name is Jess Rono. I'm excited to be here. I'll be studying with you the courage to stand. Amen. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Rimona. My name is Jaffet Rono, taking us through persecuted yet triumphant. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath. My name is Adar Zef. I'll be taking us through the morning star of the Reformation. Amen. Darkness. Amen. Thank you. As you've heard, you as you have heard, the the topics are really interesting. And before I forget, my name is Rumona Fio, and I'm glad to be part of this discussion. Standing for the truth. We are in lesson four. We're still doing the book Great Controversy, and today I went through the trouble of getting us the books actually. So this is really the old. I'm hoping that it's being zoomed for you to see. <laughs> this is a bit old. Um, it has the the title the. Great Great controversy, and then we have this version that I think all of us have seen, uh, The Great Hope. The content is still the same. The titles might be different, but the content is still the same. So what are we going to go through or learn in the title, Standing for the Truth? Uh, this week we are focusing on chapter 4 and 6 of the Great Controversy. And I'm hoping that you're reading the book Great Controversy. So I don't know if this is the time you want to just give us a brief summary before we continue. Mm -hmm. So chapters 4 and 6 of the Great Controversy are actually a review of three groups of people mm -hmm. um, who were standing for truth. Mm -hmm. The Waldenses, yeah. uh, John Wycliffe, mm -hmm. and Hass and Jerome. Mm -hmm. The Waldenses who, um, uh, in, in living in difficult uh, positions and difficult streets, were still able to manifest their faith in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and the Word. Mm -hmm. John Wycliffe, whose love of the truth really characterized who he was and mm -hmm. how he was able to translate the Bible. Mm -hmm. And Hass and Jerome, who even gave their lives for Jesus Christ Amen. and for the truth. Amen. And I'm praying that these characters that you are going to look at will inspire our spiritual work and even to the end times especially. Our memory text comes, comes from the book of uh, John chapter 3 verse 14 to 15. Just slightly above the, our favorite verse of John 3 16. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have what? Eternal, Eternal life. life. A story is told about a modern Turkish secret city of Iz Izmir. It was once a biblical city of Sim <laughs> Simina. <laughs> it's, and then it is also mentioned in the book of Revelation. This ancient city had approximately about 100,000 inhabitants. It flourished in the late and the first century, and it was such a prosperous city. And we could compare it to Nairobi, to New York, to, you know, many cities that are flourishing. But as time went by, these citizens were commanded to burn incense to the Roman gods. It was okay, but in the second century, the city had a thriving Christian community. That means that it will become trouble because the Ten Commandments say that you should not have any other gods before who before God. And the thing that resulted from these Christians not accepting to offer um, to give offerings to these Roman gods is that 
people were martyred in the public square. They were banned for the sake of uh, refusing to betray the, their Lord or by burning the incense to the Roman gods. And it was such a, a painful thing. And I know we've seen movies sometimes. We've had stories. And one particular man that stood out was an 86-year-old man who refused to dishonor God, who refused to offer burning incense to the Roman gods. And when he was asked why, or when he was pushed to the core, his reply was this, 86 years I have served him, and he has done me no wrong. How can I speak evil of my king who saved me? We all know the story for him. It ended badly. He was also martyred. And he was not the first or the last. Throughout the centuries, men and women have been willing to experience martyrdom rather than give up their faith in Christ. The sacrifice rekindles our courage because these stories, they have a way of spreading like bushfire. And every time someone hears, someone uh, was murdered because they refused to bow down. An example of Stephen, an example of the apostles, John, Peter, whenever they, di they died for their for their faith, it rekindled a lot of courage. And I know even you, your courage will be rekindled by the end of this lesson. And for that, we go to our first lesson, which is Sunday, persecuted yet triumphant. Please, Zafir, take us through. Thank you, Ramona. Mm -hmm. I think uh, even before we go into the, the lives of the Waldenses, mm -hmm. uh, John Wycliffe and Hassan Jerome, mm -hmm. it's good for us to ground all of them in, in, in the Bible, in Bible prophecy. And actually, we find the story of their persecution and the persecution of so many Christians in the book of Daniel and Revelation. In the book of Daniel chapter 7, from verse 23 to 25, we actually find a very short recollection, um, a, a, a short story, like a, a capturing a piece of history um, of a particular power that persecutes God's people for a very, very long period of time. Reading from the King James Version, it says, Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be different from all the other kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, shall tread it down, and break it in pieces. And then he says, Ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And this is the most important part. The most important part is that he shall speak great words against the Most High, that this power shall be blasphemous. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. In fact, the very core of our study, that there are people who shall be persecuted by this power, and he shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand for a particular period of time. For how long? For a time, which is one year, times two years, and half a time. So for three and a half years, prophetically, there is a power called Little Horn that shall persecute the people of God. And, and we find the same story. Uh, because the spirit is one uh, uh, that uh, gives prophecy. Uh, Revelation chapter 12 from verse 6, uh, uh, a reading in verse 6 and verse 14. Again, King James. Revelation 12 verse 6, it says, And the woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared of God, that they should feed her for how long? For 1,260 days. Now, biblically, um, one year is 12 months, 30 days. That means three and a half uh, prophetic years. If you do the calculation, that comes out to 1,260 days, the same period of time that is being described here. And again, in verse 14, it says, And the woman was given two wings of an eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place that was nourished for her for a time, one year, I said, two times, and half a time from the face of the serpent. Again, you can see that the spirit is one. That the prophecy is actually speaking of the very same thing. The power that is spoken of here, unfortunately, is the power that you have been describing a little bit here and there, the corruption that had entered into the church. And the church ultimately took upon itself the garb of Rome. With, um, in the last few weeks, we've discussed all the ways that false teachings entered into the church and false um, systems of worship and understanding entered into the church. And now the church from a particular period of time was empowered by the state to actually become even in, in fact, the word was the corrector of heretics, at least as the church at that time um, um, understood that phrase. Now we saw 
from the last few studies we've been having that the church itself was corrupt. So what? who are the heretics of a church that is corrupt? In fact, those ones who are preaching the truth and preaching the word of truth. So that is why what we've just described is actually a description of the church, unfortunately, persecuting God's people for 1,260 days. But then obviously... Um, first of all, to be persecuted for three and a half years is, is difficult, but it is something that passes. Three and a half years um, uh, can just pass. Here we're talking about three and a half prophetic years. One day in the Bible, prophecy represents one year. In the, in the book of Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 6, there's a prophecy that God gives to Ezekiel. He says, lie on one side for 40 days. Why? Because I have apportioned 40 years of punishment for, Jer for, for Judah. And then lie on the other side for 395 days. Why? Because I have portioned 395 years for the, uh, the northern kingdom, for Israel. And then he says in Ezekiel chapter 4 verse 6, I have given one day for a year. And the same thing is found in the book of Numbers chapter 14 verse 34. That Israel, because Israel sojourned for 40 days, they will enter into the wilderness for 40 years. Again, God apportioning a day prophetically for one year. And, that, and that's exactly what happened. Can you imagine that for 1,260 years, God's people were being persecuted. They were in difficult straits. They were, they were constantly, in fact, when we look at, um, through the lives of the Wardenses shortly, the life of John Wycliffe and the life of Hass and Jerome, we will see that God's people had it very difficult. In, uh, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Paul speaking right before he is being, um, he's about to meet Nero and be beheaded because this is his last, last testimony that he is giving when he's in prison, when he's in bonds. He says, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, Yea, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Shall suffer persecution. And unfortunately, for 1,260 years, God's people were being persecuted. From the year 533, the church um, was officially given the title of the corrector of heretics by Emperor Justinian. And in 538, what happens? There were particular powers that were resisting the influence of the, of, um, of the papacy. They had a different kind of Christianity, another wrong kind. They were Arians. They did not believe that Jesus Christ was fully God. And so they also had so, their own issues, but they were, were, were at war with the papacy. They were at war with the church at that time, and they even besieged Rome. And in the year 5 38 uh, 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 Belisarius, who was a general of Justinian, he went and he chased away the Ostrogoths. And from 538 onwards, the church was uh, uh, um, had the freedom to 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 enact the um, the title that was given to it in 533, being the corrector of heretics. And I'm telling you, they corrected it in as in unfortunately as terrible and frightful a way as could possibly be imagined. And and they executed all these things to a people who are innocent, people who had no weapons, people who are like like you and like me, people who simply had a desire to, to honor and be faithful to God. By the grace of God, eventually the 1260 years came to an end. For, for, for those of us who are um, doing some simple mathematics, 538 plus 1260 takes you to 1798. And the same way, one general of one emperor, Emperor Justinian's general, Belisarius, chased away Ostrogoths and gave a, a, a power and victory to the papacy and, 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 and freedom. It's the same way that freedom was taken away from them by General Bathia of Emperor Napoleon in 1798, when the papacy was effectively um, a, 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 a robbed of all the power that it had. And so God's people at least had a breather. But for those three and a half prophetic years, they suffered. But as we say in the title, that they, they, they suffered, but their persecution was triumphant. And you and I, uh, we may not go through the difficulties that uh, 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 those Christians went through. But in our own challenges, we know that the enemy oppresses us. People around us may have difficult challenges upon us, but God will give us the victory no matter what. Sometimes the victory is in a way that is not so wonderful for us. We'll see in examples of Hass and Jerome. Other times the victory is in a way that is at least more comfortable. We'll see in the example of John Wycliffe. But ultimately, it is still a victory and a triumph that Jesus Christ can give us. Man, persecuted yet triumphant. A question that maybe that may come up to to us, Japheth. This uh, prophetic years. We did this in Revelation when we were studying the book of Revelation. We also yes. did some math. So today we are coming again back to this 1,260 days. It was prophesied by Daniel, yes. right? 
um, are these the days that we are expecting? Is, is there like a repeat of history, the same exact days? Or what is it, is this something that we are supposed to expect? That's the question uh, maybe uh, I'll ask. Okay. Uh, in uh, the exactxness of 1,260 days. Yes, we, we, we can expect. In fact, we, we, we can look at history and see that it was fulfilled exactly. In mm. 538, mm. Uh, 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 the persecution began mm. with, the, with the power given to the church. Mm. And obviously, it didn't begin with intensity. It began like gradually. Yeah. And then it peaked mm. around 800 to 1,200 and mm. stuff. Mm. And then it gradually declined. In fact, Christ himself said, um, speaking of this persecution, that the days should be shortened. Mm. And there was actually, uh, uh, even if that the power was cut off in 1798, mm. the power actually began to wane around the 1500s mm. and the like. So again, the, the prophecy was actually fulfilled very precisely. In fact, there's a question here. Mm. Uh, how has the fulfillment of this Bible prophecy strengthened yeah. my faith? Yeah. And the answer is, it's wonderful. It means at least, first of all, even if I'm going through a difficult time, mm. as the church here was prophesied to go through, God foresaw it. And God foresaw that he would have the he he would give protection. Mm. In the book of Revelation, we saw that there was a place prepared for God's people, yeah. the church, the woman. Mm. Uh, and the book of Jeremiah, chapter 5, verse 2, I think, mm. um, I have looked at, likened the root of Zion to a comely and delicate woman, mm. that the church is a symbol, a woman, a symbol of the church. And that God prepared a place for the church. Amen. And it's so wonderful that, that this prophecy is a sign of, of, of God's power, even despite our challenges. Mm -hmm. And last week we were talking about providentially. God had providentially taken care of his children. Yes. And again, today we are meeting that. Um, Amen. Oh, I think today we are meeting them being persecuted and them triumph, uh, becoming triumphant. Uh, we move to the Monday part. I know we have comments, but we'll take them. Uh, light vanquishes the darkness. Uh, Osongo, please take us through. All right. The book of uh, Jude uh, opens uh, from verse 1. Uh, it says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus and called. Continues and says, uh, Mercy unto you and peace and love in verse 2 be multiplied. Verse 3, he continues and writes and says, Beloved, when I, ha when I gave all diligence uh, to write unto you, of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Mm -hmm. So Jude is speaking to the Christians at that particular age and Christians of all ages to come. Even uh, we here today, that it is needful for us, and uh, he saw it needful for himself and also for us to exhort us, to encourage us to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered and to the saints, mm -hmm. that we are supposed to guard uh, our heritage, our Christian heritage, which mm -hmm. is the word of God mm -hmm. and, and, and faith, and, 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 and to keep it in such a manner that we will be able to express it and, and, um, and, and, and um, show it in its most purest form. And so he's speaking to them and he's telling them to do all these things. And he gives them a reason in verse 5. He says, for there are certain men crept in unawares mm -hmm. who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, and godly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus mm. Christ. Mm. So, Jordan almost, uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit in, 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 in inspired thought, he sees and he says, even, even Paul writes the same in other places, mm. says, the day of Christ's coming will not come until the first comes out, are falling away first. Mm. And so scripture is rife and, 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 and is rich with warnings over time when the church will be corrupted. Yeah. And Jude writing to the early church <clears throat> back then, and to us today, he tells us to contend earnestly mm. for the faith that was delivered unto the saints, mm. for this faith. And so um, the Monday aspect simply speaks to us about this, um, this, this, this struggle that has been there. And uh, eventually we saw, we laid uh, the groundwork uh, from, the, from last week's lesson, we saw how Christians were being persecuted by paganism, mm -hmm. but eventually we saw how pagans now, the devil changed tactics and, and like a flood, mm -hmm. they entered the church. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, there were many new teachings which were not uh, in keeping with the word of God that came, into, that came into the church. And therefore, the men and women who heeded to the call of God and contended uh, honestly and valiantly for the word of God are the ones to whom we owe 
the wonderful um, uh, things that we that we uh, that we are uh, enjoying today. Mm -hmm. We see uh, the lesson writer says this admonition meant even more to believers in the Middle Ages after pagan practices had flooded into the church and human traditions compromised the word of God. Mm -hmm. He continues and, and uh, quotes from the book Great Controversy, page 61. It says, in every age there were witnesses for God men who cherished faith in Christ as the only mediator between God and man mm -hmm. and who held the Bible as the only rule of life and hallowed the true Sabbath. Mm -hmm. these, are, these are themes and things which were under attack even in the church back then. We saw during these dark ages, these 12, um, 1260 years, that the Bible was withdrawn from the people. Mm. The Bible was uh, something that was kept for the elite. It was in a language for the erudite, those mm. who are learned. And the common man could not read the Bible in his common language. And they required a priest or a, or, or a nun or somebody, uh, some ecclesi somebody with some ecclesiastical authority or uh, Levitical authority to break it down for them. Mm. And we'd realize what, what, what we'd realize is that the church back then was teaching error. Mm -hmm. They had replaced our Lord Jesus Christ with many other things, other forms of paganism. But the Bible speaks to us and tells us that there were men and women uh, through prophetic vision that had been predicted who will stand. The men and women who adhered to the warnings um, of, 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 uh, of the Bible. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, uh, John writing the following, he says, Fear none of these things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall come, shall cast some of you into prison, that he may be tried, and he shall have tribulation ten days, and be thou what? Faithful, Faithful unto, death, unto death, and I will give mm. thee a crown, crown of, of life. life. Mm. See, these are words that were being written to, to a church that was being prepared. Mm. And these words, to a certain extent, also apply to us today in a microcosm in our lives and in a macrocosm in the future as we are looking towards the final events of this earth's history. It speaks to us that in this world, as we are looking to follow God, uh, as we're looking to heed uh, the admonitions of God and of the Spirit in our lives and we're looking to be faithful, then the devil, of course, will challenge us. The devil, of course, will be, will be angered and will try to put us down. And he says, in all these things, let us be of good fear. Let us, do, let us, let us be of good cheer, rather, and not be fearful, but rather know that uh, he who is with us is greater than he who is in the world. Amen. Writes in the city, um, uh, these words were written to the church in, at Smyrna by, by, by John while he's exiled in Patmos. And it says, one of the city's patron gods was Dionysus, the god of festivity and fertility. And very lewd, very lewd um, religious activities were done under, um, under the worship of Dionysus. And we're told that when the priests of Dionysus died, a crown was placed on their heads in their funeral procession. But John contrasts this earthly crown placed on the head of on the head at the death with the crown of life, placed on the heads of those who are victorious over the forces of evil. The crown of life is presented to those who endured trials, difficulties, sufferings, and death itself for Christ's sake. It says, the crown of life inspires these faithful believers to endure death itself for Christ's sake. The crown of life always motivates believers in challenging circumstances. And so, it motivated, it inspired the Waldenses, it, it inspired Haas and Jerome and many of the other uh, um, fathers of faith before, before us. And similarly, it should inspire us in this day and age to be faithful to God. Amen. Let us always know that light will always beat darkness. Mm, amen. Before the crown, there is the thorn. And we always forget the thorn part. Um, that we have to go through difficulties, trials, and tribulations for the, tri for the um, crown to come. Our eyes need to be fixed onto Jesus. The trials will surely come. But who or where are you fixing your eyes to? Are you looking onto Christ? Are you looking onto having that crown of life? Uh, are you asking yourself, will there be many stars on my crown? What are you fixing your eyes to? We quickly jump to Courage to Stand. Um, please just to take us through that. Um, I'm just I'm excited about how the um, discussion is going. I, but I just want us to remind what we're actually studying. Mm. It's the great controversy yeah. between light and darkness. Yeah. And we began with looking at who was the source of this controversy. Mm. It began in heaven with yeah. the devil. And as we have taken the track of time with what my brother has mentioned, that what the devil could not achieve through persecution yeah. he wanted to achieve through compromise and mm -hmm. that's where we ended the lesson yesterday uh, last week mm -hmm. um and today we are asking ourselves is 
were there people who stood against this yeah. compromise mm -hmm. and what was the response and we need to remember if there is anyone behind this controversy it is not a, a, a church it is not a system it is the devil himself ultimately and he takes different forms last week we saw he took uh, he took the form of um, the government pagan Rome and to and this week we are seeing him taking the form of papal Rome but did God foresee all this did God foresee that his church will actually go through this period the Bible says he did and that's why um, um, Japheth covers it and um, tells us that in the book of Revelation um, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 12 verse 6 the Bible will tell us that the church would flee into the wilderness mm. and there God had prepared a place for her to be mm -hmm. hidden and in this wilderness is where we are uh, we are seeing the first group of people um, on, that are covered in the Tuesday part the wild dances that were hidden through this period mm. that choose, chose to stand against that compromise they were standing against a very powerful mm -hmm. church the Roman Catholic Church mm -hmm. at that time they were standing against powerful popes who had armies around them mm -hmm. who had powerful people around mm -hmm. them standing against doctrines that did not exist in the Word of God mm -hmm. standing standing against um, Sunday worship mm -hmm. veneration of saints mm -hmm. praying for the dead mm -hmm. purgatory and things that do lot. not exist mm -hmm. in the Word of God mm -hmm. and these are humble farmers living in the um, in the wilderness having flown away from this persecution but choosing to stand for the word of god why one believing that the word of god holds authority over every other thing that we have in this world authority over any church system authority over any pope authority over any church elder were they right were they good citizens yes as far as it was obedience to the law of the land they obeyed it but when it came to compromising anything that had to do with the law of God they could not but they courageously stood having looked at those who had gone before them the disciples of Christ Jesus for example in the book of Acts chapter 5 we see Peter and the disciples standing before a council of the Jews having gone forth to proclaim the true gospel and 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 they stand before this council and they tell the council we would rather obey and they are telling a powerful council that can kill them that you would rather obey God rather than men and this is how the wild dances stood having this courage of the one who gave them the instructions telling them that be strong in the Lord the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 will tell them tell tell us and the power of his might yeah. and knowing very well put on the full armor, armor of, of God, God. Yeah. but we know that we are fighting against principalities powers in high places and this is how the world um, stood and today the same thing is required of us we are called to stand in a time when there are many doctrines arising around us and what looks like the truth does not seem to be popular actually I think recently a, a new um, documentary came up mm -hmm. and people are, are out in a way why the devil is seeking to suppress the truth yes. the devil mm -hmm. does not want the truth to come out just the same way during the time of the world dances he did not want the truth to come out so any person who proclaimed the truth mm -hmm. they were persecuted they were killed mm -hmm. they were pursued and so it is in our time what truth has God revealed to you the Bible in the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 God will speak to Joshua and tell Joshua be ye courageous that thou mayest stand to do what to obey the law of God why to obey the truth requires a lot of courage to keep the Sabbath rather than Sunday requires a lot of courage to dress well requires a lot of courage to a courage to choose to follow the Word of God and to believe that Christ is the only way of salvation requires a lot of courage today when atheists are standing around us and telling us that those things which we believe are mm -hmm. fables that we are deluded that the religion that we are holding is the religion of our fathers today we are called to have 
have the same courage the Waldenses had, the reformers had, and the disciples of Christ had. Mm. And guess what? Mm. Has God foreseen that even in these last days, that the same thing will happen in his church? We are told, yes, a time of trouble is about to come upon the face of the earth that has never been seen before. You think the 1,260 years was difficult? Oh, there is one coming that is even more difficult. But you will only be able to stand at that time to confess Christ openly at that time if you can confess Christ openly today. Mm -hmm. But we have this faith. We have this hope that God foresaw it and he promised, I will be with you always, Amen. even to the very end Amen. of the age. Amen. Therefore, stand courageously for the truth. Hold fast to that which you have and you will obtain the crown. That is Revelation mm -hmm. chapter 3 verse 11. Amen. Thank you, Zaz. And when you read the great controversy chapter 4 is where you find the story of the Waldenses. They did a lot of things. To them, scriptures were not just um, stories that of God tri being triumphant with the past. They believed, that it's actually, the writer actually said they saturated their heads with the scriptures, the New Testament. My question to you will be, have you saturated yourself with the scriptures of the word of God because like Japheth told us the Bible had been withdrawn from them they didn't have the Bible the other time we were making a joke here that we have uh, downloaded uh, Bibles on our phones that we rarely even open some most of the times for them they didn't have and what did they do they cut they they had people young the youth the lesson writer even takes their us, children yeah their children they taught them you know what you need to sit down and write this um, if it is the book of John, you are writing John. The other one is writing um, Matthew. The other one is writing Revelation like that. And through that way, the, the word of God was spread silently but radically. And so the community of Christians really thrived. And I was, as I was reading, I was like, wow, this was so mighty. There was no social media to, to share. You know, in the t times of social media, you upload a video and everybody else is sharing. And that is how everyone else gets to read the message. But for them, it was even through their professional life, right? As a uh, matter of fact, we are told that they sent their children specifically to the universities imagine. so that that light could could be Imagine. spread despite the mm. challenges around them. Yeah, and the risk that was a lot of risk, you imagine. They are standing against a very powerful government, but they triumphed. They were being persecuted, but they triumphed because they chose to have the courage of Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Thank you so much, Jess. And we now move swiftly to our Wednesday part, the morning star of the Reformation. Zaf, uh, Zaf please take us through. Yeah, um, just continuing on from uh, where Jess has left, we've talked about the Waldenses, the life they lived. Mm. Um, actually, it's told that some of them even lived in caves. Yeah, yeah. And and just for what now? You know, for for the sake of the word of God, mm. then then um, this, the, there must be some power in the word of God, mm. right? Mm. There must be a reason why someone would want to die. For this word of God, mm. because they had not seen Jesus, yeah. it is just by faith. They have it's just, just by read reading the, the word of God, yes. and someone is willing and ready to defend the word of God mm. to death. That is already very inspiring to 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 us. And 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 as I read from the book of Psalms nineteen, that is from verse seven. It says that the the the, the law of, of the Lord is perfect, converting mm. the soul. The testimony of the Lord is pure, making wise the simple. Mm. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yeah, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is won, and in keeping them there is great reward. Amen. So, Amen. Mu so much promise in, 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 in reading the word of God. Mm. That you know, it is sweeter than, than honey out mm. of the honeycomb. It is even more precious than gold. Mm. You know, it is better than that. You know, we, we run so much for money, and you no, know, the devil has really kept us busy. Mm looking for money, looking for wealth. Mm. But do you know that 
right there in your in at, at home right there in your in your in your hands right now when you are holding the the word of god you hold something more precious than gold you know you hold something sweeter than even honey out of the honeycomb and so um in jeremiah 15 verse 16 uh, 15, 16 says, Your words were found and I ate them, and your word was to me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Mm. When you read Psalm 119, verse 40, also we rejo- you, you find uh, David rejoicing in the word of God and saying that this, this, this I love, you know. He has already fallen in love with the word of God. So um, with this came now the morning star of the Reformation. Mm. You see, uh, during the Waldensian time and the period of uh, darkness, um, the the people were kept away from the word of God. And so they they, they, they were so clogged even in their minds. Mm. They didn't feel the freedom. Mm. They didn't feel that they were walking in the light. They were so much in darkness. But when um, people like John Wycliffe came and started reading the word of God. Mm. Then it was like a light that sparkled and just came and just was shining all over everyone, converting the soul, as you're being told in uh, the book of Psalm 19. And this is really sweet because it is the sweetness of the word of God that actually led John Wycliffe mm. to translating mm. that word of God. Mm. Because for them, it was not a laborious task. You know, It was not something that they were just reading to be um, a, a legalistic exercise, you know. It was something that they really enjoyed and they were um, uh, really eager to even tell others about this word of God. Mm-hmm. And and the word of God really, it, when you study the word of God, it, 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 as the lesson writer says, it, it enables every thought, it, every feeling, and, it's, and it's an, as an inspiration that no other study can get us to, even the study of philosophical um, ideas, you know. So, so without the word of God, the whole earth is in darkness. It is just because of this word of God that today we can rejoice in the hope of glory. And when we will read further, even in the next coming day, we'll realize that therein the word of God sits great and lovely promises mm-hmm. that even when God is, we cannot see God right now. It is the word of God that can keep us going. Amen. You know, it is the word of God that can keep us mm-hmm. going. And so for John Wycliffe, coming out of this um, uh, uh, revolution period uh, or reformation period, really was inspired through the sweetness of the mm-hmm. word of God to read it more and to translate it. Amen. And we hope this also to the viewers that you will actually enjoy reading the word of God. Mm-hmm. And from enjoying reading the word of God, that's when you will get the true transformation in your heart Mm. and you will be able to see the goodness and the love that God or Jesus Christ offers to us. Amen. Thank you. Amen. One evening when you were having prayers with my with a group of people we pray with, then one of us was like, I have a testimony. I can't keep it to myself. I must share it. And the moment he finished sharing the testimony, he was like, Ha, ah, I feel like I've, I'm relieved. The burden that was in my heart has been relieved. I feel like this was the same case for John Whitecliffe. Because after reading the word of God, he felt so excited, such that the lesson writer tells us that the two reasons why he translated the Bible into English, because during that time, as we have been told by Jess and Japheth, the Bible was not in English. It was written in a language that only the elite could understand. It was like, um, you know, there's a Swahili saying that says, Akufkuzea kwambi toka. It was a sign like you are not supposed to read this book. But John Whitelife uh, translated the Bible into English for two reasons. The living Christ changed him through the word of God. And the love of Christ motivated him to share what he had learned with others. I don't know if you are motivated to share the word of God. I don't know if you've been motivated to even read this book, share with your friends and neighbors. I don't know. If it has not reached that level, I pray that with fervent prayers and reverent study of the scriptures, you'll get there too. And now we move to the Thursday part. Uh, which all of us will um, give our contributions, are cheered by hope. Uh, starting with you, Jess, please take us through. I think it's Thursday part excites me, um, especially mm. Um, mm. 
because of what they looked forward yeah. to. Mm. Um, that they, they did not necessarily say that their present conditions were good mm. or that they are, oh, I, w- I was taken to prison mm. and I really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> it is not their present conditions mm. that they were looking forward mm. to mm. or that they enjoyed. It is what lay ahead. Yeah. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 um, to 15, speaking of the experience of, uh, of Christ and his relationship uh, with his child, church um the bible writes and says for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he christ as well himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death mm. were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Mm. They knew who had destroyed death. Exactly. And they knew if I trust in the one who has destroyed death, mm-hmm. then there is nothing that will have power over me. Amen. They also had the promise of Christ in the book of John chapter 14, verse 19, who tells them, if I live, you will live, you will yes. live also. Mm. In the book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 to 13, says that I am promising you eternal life life if you believe mm-hmm. in me looking forward to that eternal life made them joyful as a matter of fact describing john has one very strong papist said that when john has was walking to the stake mm. about to be burned to death Imagine. he appeared as though not someone who was walking to his death but someone who was walking to his marriage feast can you imagine he says he had such a peace on uh, on uh, on his countenance and that when he uh, when he stood on that um um, when he was tied on that stake, ready to die, he started singing a hymn. He actually sang a hymn, um, um, G- um, Christ Jesus, um, um, Son of Nazareth, have mercy on me. That's a song he was singing throughout his death when he was being burned to the stake. Why? He looked forward to, and mm. he knew what came, I, I mean, what was coming after. Writing a letter to his friend, writes to the friend and says, you know, even if we do not meet in on this, on, 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 on this side of eternity i look forward to when i will meet you there and that is what kept their faith going that is what made the persecution easier Mm. because christ has indeed contrary to what many people may believe that there is no life after death Mm. christ has promised us eternal life despite the challenges that we may be facing today a new world is coming a new earth is coming Mm. it kept them it can keep us today amen cheered by hope um on Songo, what what are your comments on the Thursday part shared by Hope? I think um, an analogy has come has come, has come to mind uh, right now is these men and women beheld Christ, having seen the wonderful things that God has promised. It is like a child or like a person who has gone to the kitchen, and you've seen what the chef has made, <laughs> and you know that the meal is uh, like a three course meal. And so when people are having the starter and they're filling their plates with starters, you, you are patient. <laughs> you know, the main thing is coming. The chef, the chef is still uh, flipping things and making things. Mm. And it is, this, it, is, it, is, it is this in mind that we find even Hass is, is, is um, for example, Hass is, is being quoted from the book Great Controversy once again, page 107 and 108. It, he, he writes to his friend and he says the following, I write this letter in my prison and with my fettered hand, expecting my sentence of death tomorrow, Mm -hmm. when with the assistance of Jesus, we shall again meet in the delicious peace of the future life. You will learn how merciful God has shown himself towards Mm me, how effectual how effectually he has supported me in the midst of my temptations and my trials. We see this man having a peace that surpasses human understanding. Mm. You know, when the papists and the church back then through force was uh, asking them to, to, to practice their faith contrary to the way the Bible asked them to, 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 to practice. These men and women got strength to be able to stand against the church, mm. a church that had uh, not only ecclesiastical power, but also political power. Mm. They were able to pass down sentences of death. They were able to say, even if, even if, it, if, even if it's the face of death, I will not forsake, mm-hmm. as, that's written, as that says the Lord. Mm-hmm. And we see them enable, uh, dying gruesome deaths, but they die with peace. Amen. They die, they mm-hmm. die with, uh, with, with, with love. Mm-hmm. They die sometimes even forgiving the men and women mm-hmm. who are persecuting mm-hmm. them. And so uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23, 
Paul, writing to the Hebrews and to us by extension, says, Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Amen. For he is faithful that has promised. Amen. God is faithful. Mm-hmm. And so, it uh, speaks to us, to our condition presently. As a result of choosing to follow God, you may have lost your job. Mm-hmm. As a result of uh, choosing to follow God, you may have lost some friends. There are some things that you may, you may lose. And sometimes you may look like you are odd. Some certain decisions you make because of what you've read and your convictions. And you know, God does not want me to live this type of life. And you have a number of your friends who are living that type of life. And it seems as if you're a fish that has decided to walk on land and it's something unheard of. Even your whole family doesn't follow Mm. that particular way. Mm. But if you are faithful and you hold steadfastly, there is a crown of life that is promised to us. So even in our persecution, the midst of our persecutions, God is with us. He went, he walked this way before us and He's seeing as he has already prepared the way, it is only um, it is only good that the servant follows the master. Amen. Zef, um, Ansongo has talked to us about losing everything for Christ. He's even given us examples of sometimes it goes as far as losing a job. I think that's the painful thing in this time. Imagine losing your job in this economical times, not because you're underperforming, not because there is retrenchment or anything, but just because you've decided that I'm not going to work on Sabbath. What in the end do you really lose? Is it really the job or is it the friends or is it the family? What do you really lose? I'm asking, what in the end do we really lose, as in Mark 8, 36? Because we've talked about losing the earthly things, but do we really lose? Okay, um, about lo- loss, um, mm. when we lose our jobs for the sake of Christ, mm. when we, we lose our loved ones for the sake of Christ, when we lose even our own lives mm. for the sake of Christ, mm-hmm. You you have not lost. Amen. John five twenty four. You know it begins with from the from New King James Version. This is Christ speaking, mm. and Christ is saying, Christ is God. Eh? He's saying, most assuredly, mm. I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who has sent me has everlasting life. Amen. Amen. And shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life mm. so that which you have you think you have lost mm. when the lord finally will give us the crowns Amen. when the lord finally will r- clothe us with those robe of righteousness mm. then you will not even count it you'll see as if it was nothing yeah you know this work uh, of salvation, it worketh for us a much more greater weight of glory that we cannot even imagine. That we cannot even imagine. Mm-hmm. And so, feel encouraged. Feel, feel, have the hope because sweet promise is given Amen. to all who believe. Amen. Behold, it comes quickly. Mm-hmm. Sweet promise is given. Mm-hmm. And so, feel Feel, 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 feel this. Feel, feel, feel encouraged. You know, John fourteen one says, "Let, let not your heart be troubled. troubled. Believe in God and also believe in me." Mm. You know, He has gone there to prepare, prepare a place for us, mm. and assuredly, or most assuredly, He shall come back for us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Uh, Zafet, really, what lessons do we gather from the Waldenses, the reformers, John Wycliffe uh, has, Jerome? What lessons can we gather from them and how can they cheer us in this hope that we are living in? Yeah, thank you so much. I think um, uh, uh, all the panelists have said so many things, but for me, what uh, so many wonderful things, but for me, the main thing that I see is that the Waldenses, uh, John Wycliffe, Hass and Jerome, mm-hmm. they saw Jesus as the first, last, and best. Amen. And they saw his word that he has given to us as more important than anything anyone could possibly say. Mm. That they accepted and they appreciated the warnings in the Bible. Mm. I think even uh, 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 the last lessons we've been going through, the warnings in Acts chapter 20, the warning that we saw in uh, uh, 
Jude chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, where we are being warned that people will creep in and they will look like they are Christians, mm. but they are actually wolves in, mm. in the attire of a sheep. Mm. And, and God's people need to be keen. The warden says, Joaquin, they said we will have none of, of, of what appears to be an exaltation and, and worldly wealth. Mm. And, they, and, and they were content to live in difficult straits. Mm. John Wycliffe himself, he was, uh, he, he was in such difficult tra- straits, but he accepted that the word of God was more than sufficient Amen. for him. Him, and he loved it Amen. and 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 he he was almost persecuted mm. he 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 by the grace of god he was not uh, 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 killed as a matter but even he was his his body was exhumed after his death mm. and they burnt it because they hated um, what he loved, but what he loved was the word of God. Has and Jerome, they love the truth. You mm. and I, let us love Jesus, mm. let us love the word, and let us accept the, and appreciate the warning that there are wolves in sheep's clothing, and let us beware and focus on Jesus, focus on his word. Amen. Amen. Time is really far much spent, but I'll give us each one second to just wrap up the major lesson that you would want us to leave the viewer with. Starting with you, Jess. Thank you. Mm. Um, Christ gave his life for you. He laid it all for mm. you. What will you lay for him? Amen. Will you stand for him in these last days? Mm. Ponder on that. Amen. Yes. Yeah, I just repeat what I said. Focus on Jesus. Focus on his word. Amen. Amen. Just on the sweetness of the word of God. Sing them over again to me. Mm. Wonderful words. Beautiful words. Mm-hmm. Let me more of thy beauty see. Mm. Beautiful words, wonderful words, wonderful words of love. Mm. Let us learn to love the word of God. Let us be Christians because we love God and not, not because of fear of hell. Mm. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Songo. I'd like to leave us with a quotation from uh, John Haas. Uh, this is uh, uh, captured from the book, Great Controversy, page 105 and 106. He writes and says, um, she writes and says, in another letter to a priest who had become a disciple of the gospel, has spoke with deep humility of his own errors, accusing himself of having felt pleasure in wearing rich apparel and of having wasted hours in frivolous occupations. He then added these touching admonitions. May the glory of God and the salvation of souls occupy thy mind and not the possession of benefices and estates. Beware of adorning thy house more than thy soul. Mm. And above all, give thy care to the, to the spiritual edifice. Be pious and humble with the poor and consume not thy substance in feasting. Shouldest thou not amend thy life and refrain from superfluities? I fear that thou wilt be severely chastened as I am myself. I pray that uh, myself in myself may be such a character that indeed I will not glory in the adornings, uh, in wearing rich apparel and, and, and adorning my house and my, and, and my belongings to the expense of our souls. Mm. I pray may we give ourselves overly to God and in seeking him first. All these other things shall be added to us. Amen. Amen. Like just told us, this world dances stood against so many things. The venerations of the saints, um, most of the seven Catholic sacraments, the concept of trans be- <laughs> yes, that word. <laughs> Confession of sins to human priests, the practice of infant baptism, the sale of indulgence, the doctrine of purgatory. Prayers for the dead. Instead of believing in these things, they proclaim the word of God. And the book, The Great Controversy, it says, uh, this is the really first paragraph in chapter 4. In every age, there were witnesses of God, men who cherished faith in Christ as the only mediator between God and man, who held the Bible as the only rule of life, and who allowed the true Sabbath. How much the world owes to these men, posterity never knew. They were branded as heretics, their motives impunged, their characters maligned, their writings suppressed, misinterpreted, or mutilated. Yet they stood firm and from age to age maintained their faith in its purity as a sacred heritage for the generations to come. There are people who went ahead and made this easy for you. There are people who stood and had the courage to stand as we have been taught. I'm just asking you, are you willing to be one of those? Are you willing to be counted as one of those who said no? This is the truth. It is written. I'm standing by it. Thank you so much for joining us and being part of this wonderful lesson. I'll ask just to close for us with a word of prayer. 
Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the record of Christ and what he did for us. Thank you for the record of the disciples and the courage that they had to stand. Thank you for the record of the wild dances, of the reformers, of Haas, Jerome, of all these men and women who have gone before us, laying it all for you, that, Lord, your word will stand and will be spread um, into many parts of this world. I pray that in these last days, you will help us also to allow our light to shine, to courageously stand for the truth, and, O oh God, to cling to you that we may stand against all the temptations that will come upon us. May your name be glorified even as we continue searching your scriptures, for we pray trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.